Hello there, and welcome to this special episode of The Meaningful Stitch. I am Amy Palco, and I'm coming to you from Edinburgh, Scotland. And today I'd like to talk to you about hobby yarns, because they got in touch with me earlier on this summer and asked if I would like to do a yarn review for them. They said that they would send me yarns of my choosing to knit whatever I wanted and in return for a free and fair review. And so that's what I've been busy working on over the last month or so. And I've got a couple of things that I would like to show you that I have knitted, which you might be able to see just now. <laughs> but before we get into all of that, I just want to talk to you a little bit about their website because I had to go into their website and choose which yarns I wanted and to choose projects. And that is a pretty bewildering thing, actually, when you see the full range of what they actually provide. And so I went onto their website and you can see that they've got lots of different patterns. They've got free patterns and paid for patterns. They've got links through to all of their different types of yarns. And you can see the reviews of those. You can see other people's projects. And they've even got a little bit of video footage sometimes of the yarns themselves also. Now, I ended up deciding that I wanted to knit a shawl and a jumper. And so I'm going to show you the yarns that I chose first for the shawl. So this is the yarn that I chose here, which is Evergreen Organic Wool, and it's 100% wool. It's sourced from South America from non-mulesed sheep, and the yarn is then made in Italy. It's quite a lightweight, fingering weight uh, yarn. I'll just show it to you. And it's quite loosely plied. It blooms really beautifully, it puffs up quite beautifully, and it's very, very soft. There are 460 meters to 100 grams. It's sold in 50 gram balls of 230 meters. And I've got the price here, I noted it down just before. It's eight pounds 60 a ball. Now I decided that I wanted to pair this with this. And this is their dream color. Again, it's 100% wool, it's non-superwash also, and it's a gradient yarn. And you'll see that here this colorway is called Bright Rainbow. So it's going through lots of different shades. There's a little bit of purple in there as well. It was really lovely to knit with. They were both really lovely to knit with. And I really like the combination. The dream color is £15 per ball. It comes in 100 gram balls though, rather than the 50 grams. And it's 400 meters per 100 grams. So this shawl here took three balls of the Evergreen Organic and two balls of the Dream Color. And this is what it looks like. This is the Seriously Holy by Stephen West. And I wanted to do brioche with the Dream Color because I really love how long gradient yarn looks over the brioche stitch. I think it's really pretty and very effective. Now, if you've watched The Meaningful Stitch before, you might recognize this shawl pattern because I have knitted it before. In fact, I've knitted it three times before and this is my fourth one. <laughs> but the other ones before all use the fluffy yarn that's recommended in the pattern. This one, this time I decided I was gonna use a non-fluffy yarn and that's why I've used this fingering weight organic merino. Isn't that just beautiful? There's something again, you know, to go along with the organic wool. <laughs> There's something very organic about uh, brioche patterns. They almost look like plant life or um, anemones or something like that. And then the main color here is this dream color. Now, I will tell you that while I was knitting this shawl, I became quite undecided about my color choice. And I took a long time to choose my colors, uh, particularly in the dream color, because there were so many pretty ones to choose from. But it started off, as you can see, with these quite sort of warm muted shades. And then there was a join in my wool in the ball, and it went to these really quite cool and brighter shades. And then the end of my, um, the end of one ball and the beginning of the next resulted in a return to this sort of warmer, more muted shades again. Now, I really wasn't sure about that when I was knitting. I thought I really wanted it all to be these kind of muted shades. That's kind of what I had expected. 
and that is why I'd chosen the sage green to kind of really complement that. So I was a little bit disappointed while I was knitting it and I was wondering, especially when I saw the return to the warmer colours um, with the second ball, I was thinking maybe I should have broken the yarn at that point and joined the new ball and then maybe I would have had a more consistent, uh, consistent gradation across the whole shawl. That said, when it was finished and blocked, <laughs> I absolutely love it. <laughs> and I think that's one of the risks that you take. It's not so much a risk, but it's an exploration. You have to go into it with a certain um, spirit of adventure, these kind of gradient yarns. If you really want to kind of control and create a particular look, then maybe this kind of yarn, this kind of long gradient yarn isn't for you. But if you're curious and playful and you want to explore, then I think you could have a lot of fun with this and a lot of different patterns. I think now that it's all knitted up, we've got these warmer shades, we've got these cooler shades, and I think they really work really well together. I think something, choosing a colour like the light sage has really provided that kind of neutral backdrop that's really kind of brought the whole shawl together. And I really, I think that was, that was a savvy choice on my part. Well done, Amy. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm really pleased with it. I'm pleased with how it's worked out. It kind of reminds me a little bit of, you know, when petrol is spilled on wet tarmac, that kind of petrol rainbow. That's what it reminds me of. So, and again, it's a very big, warm, generous shawl. And I think I'm going to get a lot of wear out of it now that our weather has just started to cool down a little bit. So a lot of these patterns, uh, the yarn that's recommended, it will be slightly more expensive. And I really wanted to explore, you know, can we get a really interesting visual effect from commercial yarns? And I think with the hobby yarn, I've really created that and I'm really pleased with how that's, with how that's ended up. I'll just give you a little rundown on the prices. So the three balls of the Evergreen Organic just now would cost you £25.80. And the two balls of the Dream Colour would also cost £25.80. Now that's actually just below the point at which you would get free shipping in the UK because that comes in at £59. You have, to, you have to buy over £59 in order to get your free shipping. So you would have to add about £6 onto, onto the, the cost of the yarn. But that means that the shawl comes in at £51.60, not including the shipping. Which I think is pretty reasonable, actually, for, for this, kind of, this kind of yarn, this kind of quality. Like I said, it's non-superwash. It's got this organic certification for the for the evergreen and it has this really kind of dramatic effect um so i'm really pleased i keep saying i'm really pleased but i'm really pleased <laughs> i'm really pleased with how this worked out and uh and yeah i'm glad i stuck with it i'm glad i stayed playful and curious and really allowed the colors to play out throughout the whole garment and it was a good reminder for me as well that sometimes when we're knitting we're holding our work so close and we're so involved with every single stitch that sometimes it's a little bit harder to envision the final piece, the final product. And then the moment that we're done, it's on the blocking mat and then we're wearing it around our bodies, we start to get a little bit more distance from it and we start to see it a little bit more clearly. And I think that's exactly what happened with this. It did block really beautifully. The stitches really evened out. The yarn bloomed really well, particularly the evergreen. I would be really interested in knitting with this evergreen yarn again at a tighter gauge. It's so soft and so, because of that loose ply, it's, it's not splitty. I didn't find that my, I was splitting with my, with my needle, but it's really puffed up really nicely. And so I would be really interested to see what happens when you knit that at a tighter gauge um, and say a jumper or something. And I think you could absolutely hold it with mohair uh, for some of these uh, patterns like the, the lento or the uh, ranunculus or the love note or and there's such a wide range of colours as well. So, so if you're looking for a, a really beautiful, affordable, organic 
uh, yarn, then that might be something to something to look out for. Okay, so the second piece is this one. <laughs> so this is the Pink Fizz and it's by Andrea Mowry. Uh, I've created this fabric using two of these hobby yarns. This one here, which is their alpaca silk, which is a 70% alpaca, 30% silk base. And this, which is the soft alpaca lace, and it is 100% alpaca. So you get 400 meters for 50 grams of this. And for the alpaca silk, you get 166 meters per 50 grams. Now I have used seven balls of this and three balls of this to create the size four of that pattern. Now when this pattern came out, I bought it instantly because I knew it was an incredibly beautiful one and I really wanted, I really wanted it for myself. So this is it. Now that it's finished and I've got this piece for, for uh, autumn and winter, I'm really excited. So it's this quite intense, I'll stand up so you can see, it's this quite intense lace pattern. And it's got panels, these two lace panels at the front. And then also at the back, there is a split hem. So the back is slightly longer than the front. And you can see the marled effect that you get from holding those two yarns together. You can see that gloss and gleam of the silk and then the beautiful drape of the alpaca. Like I said, I knitted a size four. I would normally knit a size three for an Andrea Mowry pattern, but I really wanted this kind of oversized boxy fit, something that would be effortlessly elegant was the phrase that I had in my head for it. And I think I've really achieved that with both the fit and the fabric. And of course, these beautiful lace patterns, uh, panels. So it's knitted from the bottom up. So you're knitting the, the hem separately to create that split hem and then joining in the round and then knitting up to the division of the sleeves for the front and the back. So it's mostly you're knitting this lace in the round, but when you get up to this point, you're having to knit your lace flat, which requires you to then reverse the way that you're thinking about how these lace stitches are created. And uh, that took a little bit of concentration. Consequently, I would not say this is a beginner's pattern. It's a beginner's pattern in the sense that if you really, really wanted to knit it and you really wanted to focus on it, then I think you could do it. It would be a stretch, um, adventurous beginner, let's call them, let's call them that. Um, but really, if you need, to, I would say it's a good idea to get a, a, more, a greater sense of some of those lace stitches before you you attempted something like this, um, especially when you have to knit the, the lace flat because there is no rest row. Quite often with lace, you have one lace row and then on the wrong side, you're just purling or you're just knitting um, and you don't have that with this. Every single row is a lace row. Uh, but the effect of it is very, is very beautiful. So you really just need to know uh, your regular yarn overs and decreases. There's a couple of different stitches that are well detailed in the pattern. The pattern is very clear, very well written. Highly recommend all of Andrea Mowry's patterns. I've yet to come across one that I don't love. Uh, the only thing that I'm not happy about with this jumper is the fit of the sleeves. So I would have preferred a much more tapered sleeve, a slimmer fit. And so my plan is to rip back these sleeves and to re-knit them, possibly picking up less stitches around here and then doing swifter decreases down the sleeve to create a, a, a more tapered effect um, so that it fits the body better, my body better, <laughs> so that then I'll have this kind of beautiful, loose, boxy fit in the body and then this um, slimmer fit around the sleeves. So that's my that's my plan for this. Price wise, the alpaca lace comes in at nine pound sixty a ball, and like I said, I got three of them, so that was twenty four pounds and seventy eight pence. And the alpaca silk, I used seven balls, although you know when I when I was looking at the pattern, it recommended, and and you know looking at the meterage of, 
of these yarns, I thought I needed nine balls of this and four balls of this, but actually I only used seven balls of this and three balls of this. And even then I had some, I had some leftovers. So uh, yes, the alpaca silk, seven balls, 13 pounds a ball. So uh, seven balls is 59 pounds and 15 pence, meaning that this jumper came in at 83 pounds and 93 pence which is a bit more pricey, um, and uh, but it's got this silk content and it's an incredibly luxurious yarn. I can't, I can't describe to you really just how um, high lux this fabric is that it's created. It's very, very soft, very drapey. It's got a lovely sheen to it. I'm so happy with how this is, this has turned out. Um, I think it's a really lovely, a lovely fabric that's been created by lovely yarns so so yeah I would recommend I would recommend this yarn as well so grateful to hobby yarns for sending me these beautiful yarns and for allowing me to play with them and to share them with you you know as I said you know I think my first impression was of hobby was that they produced a lot of acrylic yarn and they do have a lot of acrylic yarn but I was so impressed with their range of natural fibers and I'm really pleased that I got an opportunity to try some of them out and like I say, to share them with you. So, so thank you to them. Thank you for watching. And I'll be back really soon with a new episode of The Meaningful Stitch.